the newest sign of solidarity, as it were, this is what it's being called, at least in the media, has been kneeling before black people at these protests, and in other words, taking a knee and then begging forgiveness from them for white privilege. This is a trend that's been going on over and over again. Washington Post actually put up a story that listed a lot of the different incidents of this, showing a montage of clips. These things are cropping up, uh, cropping up all over the country. Here's one sampling of it that happened the other day, and I want you to take a look at it and, and be very observant of everything surrounding it and also what is being said in this clip. What I'm really concerned about here is that when you have one side that is kneeling down and falling at the person's feet and asking for forgiveness and the other side standing up, that's not reconciliation. That's subjugation. And that's a whole different ball of wax. And of course, the bigger issue in my mind here is kneeling is something that is supposed to be reserved for God and God alone. Asking for forgiveness is something that's supposed to be reserved for God unless you've personally offended the other person. There is never a, a biblical example that I'm aware of of somebody asking a group of people that has been wronged for forgiveness for another group of people. There are occasions where, for example, a prophet in Israel will pray that God will forgive the sins of the nation as a whole, but there's never an occasion of them bowing down and prostrating themselves to a person or an aggrieved party as a result of that. That's nowhere in Scripture. And so, this is not what equality looks like. This is not what reconciliation looks like. Now, if they come together in a prayer circle and they're all bowing down and all praying, and they're praying specifically to God and not one another— all right, then we're on to something, and that might actually be a pretty good sign that reconciliation is taking place. This kind of crap is not that, though. This is prostrating yourself to a human being, which is the rankest form of idolatry that a person can involve themselves in. At least when you're bowing down to a carved statue or an idol, not condoning it, but at least when you're doing that, it is some kind of imaginary phantom that you have made up in your mind. The worst kind of idolatry, both in the scripture and today, is bowing down to a human being. And this was something that was common in the ancient world. There were such things as emperor worship. It was very popular all across Asian cultures. Uh, we see it actually in the scripture with people like Pharaoh who were held up as a god by their society. This is a high, high form of heresy and evil. Now, I've heard people make the counter-argument here with this and videos like that. It's like, well, they're actually praying to God. That Yes, they are bowing down, and there's one side that's standing up, so it certainly looks like they're worshiping, which even that appearance should be avoided. But they'll say that, but they're actually playing to God, or praying to God. Well, if that's the case, why do you see in that clip, if you'll go back and watch it, why do you see in that clip that all the white people are bowed down and kneeling, and all of the black people are standing up. And by the way, not only are they standing up, most of them, I think I may have saw one or two heads bowed, but the vast majority of them aren't even bowing their head. So they're not even praying, they're being prayed to. This is an incredibly evil road to go down. And it leads to the worship of human beings. Here was another example of it where they were actually engaging in a ritualistic washing of a, a pair of black ministers' feet. Now, I'm, I'm using the term minister fast and loose here. They refer to themselves as ministers after watching this. I don't think that I would refer to them as ministers. But you can see that play out here. You got a good on behalf of uh, a Caucasian people. It's our honor to stand here. 
Now, again, my biggest issue with this is that they're not worshiping God. They are all kneeling down and worshiping the black people at the epicenter of this prayer circle thing that's going on here, and they're washing their feet. Now, to be clear, the feet washing thing, it's weird and cringy, and I don't really understand why they're doing it. Theologically, there's nothing inherently wrong with that because it's not necessarily a form of worship. There are people that worshipped at Jesus' feet as they were washing him, but that's not necessarily the thing that really sticks in my craw. I think it's weird and strange, and it rips the washing of the apostles' feet completely out of historic context. But I had an issue with ritualistic foot washing before it was ever tied to anything connected with race. That, that's not really the problem here. My biggest problem is the content of the prayer, what's being said, and by the way, again, to the people that are trying to make the argument, well, they're not, they're not trying to pray to the black people, they're trying to pray to God. Oh, really? Well, then why is it in that video, and you just saw it, that the two people doing the foot washing, they started all of a sudden entering into a prayer, and then you see the person that's a volunteer there actually go and find police officers, bring them to the front, and have them move, and actually puts her hand down on the police officer's back and basically... I know that, that, you know, they're not forcing them down, but like motions them to kneel down in front of them. And then when more people come up to gather, they're all facing the black people up at the front. Did you notice that? Because if it's just about prayer, can't you pray where you are? Could you pray wherever you were standing? No, they specifically bring them up and have them kneel in front of the black people so that they can be seen kneeling before them. This is one of the rankest, most evil forms of idolatry I have ever seen. It's just detestable. And the worst people there are the ministers. At least the, the people that claim to be ministers. Again, I'm, I'm being real fast and loose with the term. The two people that are having their feet washed, according to the story that I read, they're suppo both supposed to be ministers, and then the two people doing the, the actual foot washing are supposed to be ministers as well. They're the worst ones because they're supposed to know better. Remember that I say this as somebody that is a minister of the gospel, we're held to a higher standard. I mean, it would be terrible for anybody that has any knowledge of Scripture Anybody that, that has any kind of sense on that should be able to look around and go like, uh, yeah, this isn't right. This is absolutely not right. But what's worse are the ministers that are up there at the front that are helping lead the mass, lead the mob mentality into thinking that this is okay. And as the people basically on the receiving end of this, the second somebody did anything anywhere remotely resembling what just happened there, 
and tried to do that to me, I'd say, uh, no, 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 you, you don't worship me. You do not worship me. That, that is heresy. That is leading somebody down a false path. I, I just, I cannot fathom how anybody, and race, color, doesn't matter, anybody that has any knowledge of Scripture allowing this to go on. And honestly, if you look at what they're saying in the prayer, it genuinely sounds like a Gregory Post prayer, like the, the goofy character that I play that's like a, a, a socialist hippie preacher. It sounds like something he would have said. He uses all the right buzzwords. Uh, we're asking for forgiveness from colonialism, and all white people are guilty of this, and we apologize for our greed. And the real kicker that I, I love in here is talking about asking forgiveness from the white church. Ain't no such thing as a white church. There's no such thing as a white church. There's no such thing as a black church. There is the church, and that's it, period, end of discussion. There is no such thing as a white church. We are not racially divvied up in the kingdom of heaven. In fact, Paul is very emphatic about this, that when it comes to the kingdom of God, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. There's no such thing as a white church. And another thing, too, asking for forgiveness from all white people, asking for forgiveness from the Caucasian race, as he put it, that is racist, because you're assuming that all white people have engaged in unfair behavior and racism. That guy doesn't represent me. That guy doesn't represent me at all. Now, maybe there have been times in my past where I did things that I shouldn't have in regards to race. I'm an imperfect person. I've treated people of different races incorrectly, I'm sure, just like I have everybody else. But the idea that the entirety of the white race is somehow guilty of racism and he has to go before God to ask for forgiveness for all Caucasian people, for all crimes that have been committed against black people, that's just absurd. Not every white person is racist. And the fact that they assume this, and the fact that he uses every single politically correct buzzword in the a social justice warrior lexicon pretty much gives you a pretty strong indication that this guy is much more about political correctness than he is about actually obeying the scripture. What I will say about this is I, I do think that there is at least a monicum of good intent. And that's good. A lot of people never get to good intent. And so that that is a point in their favor. That there is some good intention here that they really are wanting to reconcile. There is probably a lot of good intention here, but no amount of good intention detracts from the fact that they are engaging in rank idolatry. And so, I, I don't know how else to, to, to phrase it there. I mean, look at how often Israel, for example, they wanted peace, they wanted reconciliation, they wanted to be able to live amongst their neighbors in peace. How often did Israel probably out of a desire to have that, engage in a lot of the same practices that the pagans surrounding them engaged in. That they started trying to adopt things like, you know, for example, in the period of the judges with Samson. It was a good thing that they wanted to live in peace with their neighbors. That is a good instinct. But if you're sacrificing truth and disobeying God's word in order to do so, that's not going to lead anywhere good. Luckily, though, not everybody has bought into the madness. Luckily, though, there are a few men left, like God says to Elijah, that have not, ba have not bended the knee to Baal. There are some people that are refusing to go along with this, and I, the best example of this so far is this state trooper out of the state of Georgia that in, in just 20 seconds very succinctly explains himself and needs no more explanation than that. Respect. I wouldn't have took, I'm supposed to be in, out of town this weekend with my wife. I took off today, this weekend, but I'm out here to make sure y'all safe. Okay. Don't go there with respect, okay? okay thank you. I have much respect, yeah. but I only live for one person. And that's God. God, God. Now, was there anything about that that was unreasonable? Was there anything about that that was theologically unsound? No. And even when he's talking to the people, now granted, there's not really, a, or at least if there is, I couldn't find it, a full clip that gives the discussion that led up to that and the, the what happened afterward. But he's saying, look, 
it's not a sign of disrespect. I have nothing against you people. In fact, I took off specifically. Even though I was supposed to be away for the weekend with my wife, I took off because I wanted to make sure that everybody here was safe. I am a servant to my community, but I don't kneel before anybody that isn't God. This is a guy that has his head screwed on right. And it doesn't become contentious. There's no vitriol there. He's just saying, look, that's not something that I do. You don't have to commit blasphemy to build bridges with people. The aver- I mean, there may be some people that are going to be outraged at it, but those are people that you're not going to appease no matter what you do anyway. Even if you do actually kneel to them, they're still not going to be satisfied. So the average normal person, the average well-intended person, could hear an explanation like that and be like, all right, believe me, if they're a God-fearing person and they have even a, a grain of rice worth knowledge of the scripture, they're going to understand your position on that one. Because this is a guy that reminds me of other prominent people in the scripture that even though they had the mob against them, they had the crowd against them, everybody else was kneeling and everybody else was bowing, he said, nope, not going to do it. I will not bend the knee to the idol of race. Or in the case of these other people, like let's look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king commanded and everybody else did it. You have to bow down to the golden idol which I have commanded and, and Shadrach, Meba- she, blah, speaking too fast. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego look at him and are like, uh, yeah, we ain't doing that. Even if you throw us into the fire, even if it costs us our lives and God doesn't rescue us, we will not bow to your gods. End of discussion. When it comes to Daniel, Daniel refused to restrain his prayer to God in order to pray to the king and ask petition of him. He says, no, that is putting man in the place of God. I'm not doing it. I'm praying to God the way that I always did. That was Daniel's stance. When it came to Mordecai, and by the way, I just a weird happenstance, but I just so happened to be reading through the book of Esther. That's just the time of year because I'm going through a yearly Bible plan. Just this morning, I was reading the book of Esther where Mordecai, her cousin, says, nope, not going to bow to Haman. Just not going to do it. I bow to God and God alone. And the reason that there is that whole kerfuffle between Haman and the Jews and, and Haman tries to get the Jews killed is because Mordecai refused to bow to him. Even though it put his entire race at risk, because this was the number two guy in the country and Mordecai had to know that that was at least a possibility that there would be blowback. Didn't matter. Mordecai said, I will not bow the knee. I won't do it. And even when it comes to a celestial being like an angel in Revelation, when one appears before John and John falls down at his feet, it says that he fell down and worshipped him. The angel says, "Uh, get up. You don't bow to me. You don't worship me. Worship God alone. I'm a servant just like you. You don't even bow to an angel. Certainly not going to bow to another human being. Like I said, there is some good intention here. They are wanting to come to a place of healing and reconciliation, and I acknowledge that. I think the good intention doesn't override the fact that what they're doing is wildly sinful. But there is a right way to do that, and so I don't want to just point out the problem. I want to point out the solution. So even though this clip is about a week old, there is a right way to do this. There is a right way to come together. And I can think of no better example than the sheriff of Flint, Michigan, Chris Swanson, who did this a week ago. The only reason we're here is to make sure that you got a voice. That's it. There we go. Don't think for a second. Don't think for a second that he represents who these cops are from all over the county and around this nation. We want to be with y'all for real. So I took my helmet off and laid the batons down. I want to make this a parade, not a protest. So, what's up? So, listen, I'm just telling you, these cops love you. That cop over there hugs people. So, you tell us what you need to do. That's how you handle it. That's all that was needed there. Officer Swanson 
he looked out, he saw that the crowd was peaceful, that they meant him no harm, that there was a abundance of goodwill there. And so he said, you know what? We don't need the riot gear. Take off the helmet, drop the batons. Let's walk with these people. That's the way you handle that. You find the people of good intent. You find the people that mean you no harm, that, that don't mean any ill towards you. And even though I'm sure that politically there was a abundance of different opinions in there or how it should be handled, didn't matter. He saw an opportunity to find some reconciliation and he went for it. That's the correct response. I'll stand with you. I'll walk with you. I will not bow to you. That is something that is reserved for God and God alone. I don't mind standing with you. Don't mind walking with you. I will stand with any man when he is right. That was the standard that Abraham Lincoln gave. But he still didn't bow to anybody that was not God. And so there is a correct way to handle this, and that's the perfect model. That is the way that you handle this. Peace does not have to cost you your soul. Because sometimes peace does have a cost. Sometimes peace does require you to do something that you wouldn't normally do, like Sheriff Swanson just laid out. But you don't have to throw away your theology. You don't have to throw away your good sense and reason in order to do it. I will stand or walk with anybody when he is right, but I will never kneel, ever, for anyone that isn't God. That's the biblically correct stance to take on this. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.